Hi, everybody. Today, I have a very, very special guest, someone who I personally have looked up to as a leader because that's how my journey started as well with the School of Leadership in Pakistan. And uh, a very important member who started that foundation in Pakistan is here with me, uh, Kamran Rizvi. Thank you so much for taking our time on a Sunday <laughs> for this conversation. So I'm really, really glad that it's, you're here. It's my pleasure. <laughs> it's my pleasure. And to know that you are sitting in a cold, beautiful place called Helsinki in yeah. Finland is even more tantalizing. I wish I could have been there. But <laughs> You're more than welcome. Happened. You're more than welcome. Yeah. yeah. But Kampa, I would really want to um, know more about it. I think start this conversation off with your journey and how you started School of Leadership um, and, you know, the lives that you've impacted. Uh, we were talking about kids from Sindh to Balochistan to Punjab to KPK, all the provinces across Pakistan and even further, because those kids have now gone ahead and, you know, started their own ventures and mashallah have had really, really good journeys ahead. Uh, and I think school leadership, you know, honestly has a really solid impact in, in, like in my life as well. Um, so, yeah, I will give it back to you. I, I think if you talk about my journey, it's going to yeah. take us a whole day and <laughs> even then I don't know. And one thing I can say about my journey is that it has happened. Mm. You know, life has happened to me. Um, I have not created that life. It has just happened. So there's a big difference between, you know, I thought of this and I mm -hmm. did that. It's none of that. I think um, like uh, when I came to this planet, it wasn't an accident. I mean, it, some divine planning must have been taking place. Mm -hmm. I was born to a set of parents at yeah. a location that I did not choose. Karachi, by the way, it yeah. was when I and um, you know, and life has taken turns, different mm -hmm. turns. We've seen the highs and lows, like most people listening right. would also see the highs and lows of life. And I feel that those who haven't seen the lows don't really know anything about the highs. And yes, um, I did my metric in 1972, and till then. I can say that um, I changed 11 schools and five cities. So that is an wow. interesting yep. uh, phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And if anyone wants to know more about that, they can always contact me and I can do a Sunday Skype with them and yep. talk about it. But uh, that actually uh, made me uh, free of the comfort zones as such. Because, you know, when you go into the same mm -hmm. school and you have a same circle of friends and you meet with them anything outside of it then becomes alien and strange very true, very true. so in That's my case, I think it's uh, very important that you mention that because if you are only surrounded by the same people then you sort of have the same school of thought right yes yes yeah. yes and and then you just find comfort in that mm -hmm. and you just stick in that and you exactly. know take turns fighting for parties and stuff mm -hmm. but in my case because i changed so many schools and five cities i mean so it had uh, you know geneva dhaka lahore mm -hmm. karachi Pura Gali. Oh, so wow. okay. college, so I was there too. Mm -hmm. So in a way, I found. Um, I mean, of course, my uh, academics were su suffering badly, but in terms of my social connect, I was able to break ice with people much quicker. I became more confident, and I started to realize that there are no strangers on this planet. That's no one yeah. strange, and therefore no one is a stranger. Mm -hmm. You know, people are different, and when people are different, it becomes all the more exciting because you want to not judge them, mm -hmm. but to understand. And 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 that entire process is so brilliant; it's unbelievable. And then God was so kind mm -hmm. that I started my career back in 1976 with a bank, right? Um, yeah. and in Abu Dhabi, in a mm -hmm. Country I did not know, city I did not know, the language I did not know, the you know the um, knowledge and competence for banking I had none. I mean, management trainee is how I was inducted mm -hmm. in Abu Dhabi, and I spent my first year, uh, you know, coming out of a cocoon amongst yep. Arabs, you know, and not being able to speak the language, not mm -hmm. doing the function. And amazing. I mean, it, and that was my first time away from home. Can you believe it? I was, wow. We were living in London. Right. We had migrated to London in 72. Mm -hmm. So I think that one year must have been very, very formative. And then I came back to London and mm -hmm. remained with the bank for 14 years. My last assignment was as head of training in the UK. We had about 1,500 employees in the UK region. Wow. Mm -hmm. The bank at that time had 72 um, was present in 72 mm -hmm. countries at 50 billion dollars in assets and stuff like that 98 nationalities 
talk of diversity. I mean, it was yep. hugely diverse mm -hmm. and multicultural. So that kind of an exposure, True. Um, simply. So I think from the very beginning of my life to this point, yep. um, I have enjoyed humanity and the different flavors it brings to the table. And you know, School of Leadership, while see, God was so kind mm -hmm. that she came in my life mm -hmm. back in um, 96. And, you know, I asked one question of her when she had spent about a month. I said, Shireen, what is your dream? And when mm -hmm. she described her dream, I said, well, my job is to make sure that you are able to pursue that. And while see, School of Leadership yep. came out of that. Right. And uh, Young Leaders Conference was a child. Mm -hmm. And uh, the child gave birth to the mother, School of wow. Leadership. Mm -hmm. And School of Leadership now nurtures the child. And now one, we've done 21 years. And so far, more than 6,000 participants mm -hmm. are scattered all over the country. As you rightly said, Gilgit, Pakistan, and mm -hmm. um, the remote stations of the north exactly. and south. Mm -hmm. And it is astonishing. You know, Pakistan is going through a very painful period right now in terms of mm -hmm. the climate change and yep. flooding. So many people have died, over 1,200 mm -hmm. or so people. God rest their souls in peace. Okay. And also give comfort to the families of the bereaved, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and 30 million people have been displaced. It's a major crisis. But one thing that gives me some comfort is the fact that while CNs are all over mm -hmm. and keep hearing news of what they are doing in their communities to help the distressed and the unfortunate who have truly experienced mm -hmm. firsthand the tragedy of uh, loss of life and displacement and stuff like that. So. The impact, uh, I think, is still a drop in the ocean, by the mm -hmm. way. Because we have a youth bulge, as you know. Africa has a youth bulge as well. And uh, in Pakistan in particular, uh, I find that YLC is the one process, one experience, which is only six days. But it yeah. is transformed. It's like a hot housing, as mm -hmm. such. Augmenting all the things that were not taught at school. True. And alhamdulillah... The outcome, like, for example, when I talk to you, I feel so enchanted and inspired and encouraged that right. our future is bright and in hands of people who see, have a vision mm -hmm. and are confident and are responsible at the same time. So if I, I have one thing about YLC here, Kamba, uh, the Young Leaders Conference, is that, yes. for example, for me, I realized that I, let's say, for example, come from Koita. I've lived most of my life in Islamabad, at least until that point when I attended my first YLC. Uh, I think this yeah. was back in it 20... Was, was it again? Uh, 20... 2014 or 2015, 2014. I think. I think so. Yes. Pindi was 2015. Right. Okay, it's 2015 then. But Gambo, for yeah. me, I think the major, I think, shift was, like you were talking about cultural, you know, like barriers and how you enjoy these flavors of humanity, right? For me, that was, this was like one gateway to enjoy the flavors of Pakistan. We are working or studying in our little bubbles, you know, let's say, you hardly shifted schools, you stayed with the same group of friends, same school of thought. You don't know how a kid in Balochistan or how a kid in, let's say, uh, you know, Rajanpur or somewhere like in the remote station of Pakistan, how are they surviving and how are they coping and what are their ideas of life and what is their school of thought? And I think while C sort of, brought me closer to another side of Pakistan, which I did not have too much experience with, right? And I think this was such a beautiful experience for me, honestly, to even understand uh, that people come together for the same vision and same goal. Uh, they speak in different languages. And regardless of, I think this is also one complex that we have, that my English is not good, so I can't communicate with someone from somewhere else. But I think the way it bridges the gap, you know, that everybody is wearing the same colored t-shirt, same up goes yeah. through the bed, and you're going to enjoy the same sort of sessions together, right? Same dinner, same yeah. hajis, and the way it brings those ideas together. I think it, it, like you said, very rightly said, it is very transformative, honestly. You do a room sharing, karte na, girls and boys. Alag, alag, uh, mm -hmm. And, um, you know, participants are mixed up. in. The, yeah, yeah. So you must have had three or four roommates. Yes. Yep. And uh, I'm sure that they were from different cultural backgrounds. Exactly. Exactly. Backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So that must have been quite something. And I'm sure you've yes. continued your links and friendships with some of them, if not. For all. sure. 
I actually got a message literally right before the session and I was like, is this the universe talking or what's happening? Uh, oh. Literally a message from uh, a YLC participant that uh, I was, I think I met that person in a conference again a year later after I attended my first YLC. So I went back as a facilitator this time. And uh, again, that was also a really good experience. But he messaged me literally right before this call. And I was like, wow, He's like long time, no see, how's everything going? And I was like, amazing, good timing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah Kamba again talking to since I think you've talked about you know your journey um, with Shireen Appa and you know how you started school leadership and the impact that you've created I think I would really also want to understand um, since you see a lot of us youngsters right coming in day in day out uh, and also with the vision that I want to change what I've learned already which brings in the concept of unlearning and then relearning right yeah. so I think I would really want to touch more upon that uh, like yeah. how do you like what do you suggest uh, people in this you know age group especially because I think this is a very transformative age group you know you hold on to the habits for the rest of your life yes you can sure. always change them but I think the core sort of sort of you know develops that foundation in your teens and in your 20s yeah I think number one um, you know the thought that comes to mind based on mm -hmm. what you've just mentioned unlearning relearning yep and um, I feel that to remain young forever, and you know, till you knock it, mm -hmm. um, to keep doing what you just said. I mean, that is vital. Not to get fixated on mm -hmm. what you know, because right. Einstein says that any fool can know. Mm -hmm. Any fool can know. Only the wise understand. Yeah. So let's keep that in the uh, mm -hmm. back of our mind. And to understand something. Uh, it requires us to shift out of our own mindset and our own paradigm into the one uh, of the person you're with. And mm -hmm. you know, having the flexibility to say, well, let me suspend judgment. Okay. Let me put aside what I know. Mm -hmm. And let me hear this person with the purity of intent and thought so that at least the person can paint a picture in my mind on my blank canvas which is giving full attention to the other. So learning is not just books or classroom mm -hmm. or um, you know lectures and workshops. Learning is life. Life is learning. And when you have an attitude of learning, there's a saying, a Chinese proverb, which says that when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And one thing I have realized that whatever I think I know, when I dig deeper, I see different dimensions of it. Mm. And what's fascinated me the most is this, that if you have 20 people in a group, for example, or you are six friends sitting together, gup shopping, okay? And you just uh, bring up a subject and say, yeah, let's talk about courage. Right. Let's talk about courage. Do you know that six people are six perspectives? And those perspectives are what we need to become familiar with, as opposed to whatever I know about courage applies to all. Mm. No, it doesn't. So unlearning is essentially being in a state of open-mindedness, in a growth mindset, wanting to not take things for granted. You know, relationships mm -hmm. go stay because we stay on the surface. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, the most mysterious phenomena on this planet is the other person and myself. And if I'm looking for miracles, I am the living miracle. You are the living miracle. We each are a living miracle. Now, unlearning requires me to say, listen, life is not ordinary. Life is not boring. Life is not... Eh, eh, eh. Life is about discovery self-discovery and discovery of others and the environment in which we mm -hmm. are. This discovery journey is a lifelong pursuit, hence lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. So I would think that it, it is a precondition to su succeed. It is a precondition to, uh, let's say, remain young. It is a precondition to be relevant to the society of which you're a part. Mm -hmm. It is a precondition to feeling fulfilled, and all those uh, emotions that you want to experience, the thrill, the excitement, the animation, the wow, the wow, I mean, aha. Can mm -hmm. you imagine, I came across a person who had not smiled in a month. 
in a month. Now, imagine what kind of a life that would be. So the, 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 the aha moments, mm -hmm. if we're not experiencing every day, we're not unlearning. We're right. not learning. Yes. We're not relearning. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I find that this is what keeps me fascinated, particularly when you talk of learning and talk of mentors and coaches, for example. Correct. That's a really good point. So when you talk about mentors and coaches, we normally think of a person older than us, more experienced than us. Yes, so that is one aspect of it. But mm -hmm. I discovered that in this era, uh, for instance, Kamran uh, right now, I mean, I'm technically, numerically 64, mm -hmm. but otherwise I'm 58, okay? Yeah. Um, but uh, so age is a number, youth is an attitude. My attitude True. is that of an eight-year-old. Love that. Okay? I discovered that mentors are people who are seeing the world in a different way, in a way which is perhaps more aligned to the uh, kind of changes taking place. So my five-year-old uh, grandson or my mm -hmm. one year old grandson or my 17-year-old granddaughter are equally my mentors because when I see the world from their eyes, mm -hmm. I see a very, very different world as opposed to imposing myself on them. Yep. So. To do that, I have to unlearn. It's a co-learning process. Mm -hmm. It's sort of teacher on the one end and the student on the other, an empty glass and you're pouring something. No, mm -hmm. it's not like that. We all were born with knowledge. We all came with everything we need to know. And it, it is now upon us to bring it out. And education is drawing out, teasing the mind, encouraging curiosity, and not taking things on the surface, mm -hmm. digging deeper. So for example, a lot of people, when I ask them, have you seen the ocean? They say, yes. I say, do you know the ocean? Do you understand the depths of the ocean, the richness that it possesses? Mm -hmm. Just because we've seen the ocean, we think we know it. And we don't want to know anymore. And that's the end of story. Now, nah, fascination, discovery. And of course, you want to discover the things that are relevant to your life. And there is enough in even an atom. Look at the science behind something you cannot see. Mm -hmm. And look at the power it possesses. True. I mean, nuclear technology is out there in front of us. Mm -hmm. Wow. So how is it that we are not fascinated by the human being sitting across? How can we get so bored and say, Ab kya mm -hmm. that kind of stuff is a, a barometer or an indicator. True. Yep. You know, yep. Yep. Oh, there's no Mama, I that. love that so much. And mm -hmm. I am moment. Like this is my aha moment right now. Honestly, just talking to you because the wisdom that's coming through this little screen is just like, ah, oh, wow. Uh Kamba, I would really want to talk about since you've also mentioned about how uh, you talk, I think you mentioned very little bit about you know the learning and learning and then also living a fulfilled life, right? And uh, yesterday when yeah. we were sort of having an intro call, right, about this session, and what it's going to be about and stuff like that, you mentioned a really important concept about meaningful and meaningless. Yes. So I think if we can also go into that a little bit, and um, because since we're already on that path of, you know, how we are sort of reconstructing our belief system, uh, right, mm -hmm. questioning everything is perfectly fine, not following what you're told is perfectly yeah. fine, not following a path that's given to you or what you should be upon. There are no shoulds. It's what yes. you want for yourself. So I think yes. if you can also talk about that, because uh, Mashallah, again, you've had a really good journey. And like you mentioned, right, you've had this youthful energy, Mashallah, for even until now, right? And you'll continue right. knowing you with that. I energy. am naughty. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm proud of it. <laughs> I love that. But come if you can also talk about that part. Like, how do you... Um, Again, I think it's a very like broad concept, but I would love to hear more from you about that. You know, that's a bit. So let's go. Let's go to the, the point where you mentioned um, full, you know, meaning and uh, meaninglessness, meaningful, yes. mm -hmm. meaningless. Mm -hmm. And I, I find that you know, as human beings, uh, leadership is a topic that I use as a lens of um, to look at life. Mm -hmm. You know, all of us are leaders, and we are all followers. The question is that, are we really aware of this fact? So if I'm in an audience of 150, 220 or whatever, I often uh, surprise them by asking, could all the leaders in the room stand? Mm -hmm. Amazing to see most of them looking at each other. Now that means that they don't see themselves 
as a leader, number one. Mm -hmm. Now, who is a leader? Leader has got nothing to do with positions and titles. Very Leadership true. is a set of behaviors. It is nothing more than a set of behaviors. And notice, every person on this planet, even a five-year-old can influence and is accountable. Even a five-year-old. Mm -hmm. So if you and I can influence another and are also held to account for what we did, we're leaders. And great followers are amazing leaders. That, mm -hmm. that is something we have to establish. So leadership is a lifestyle in any domain, whether it's in the family, in the community, in society, or wherever. Mm -hmm. I mean, in school, colleges, and universities, if you notice. And it's a role that we switch. So yes. if, for example, you're uh, working in a group on a particular project, what mm -hmm. will you do? Give the leadership to the person who's best suited to the requirements of that project, and you'll come in to support. Correct. So it has nothing to do with ego. So that's the first mm -hmm. one. But leadership, the one thing I love about it is that it defines reality. There is no such thing as reality. Reality is a very subjective mm -hmm. phenomenon. So, for instance, you and I are talking. Yeah. Move from your location in the last five minutes. Mm -hmm. No. Have you? No. You, you are where you are. Yes. I am where I am. That is our sense of reality. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you were to dig deeper, you will realize that we are both sitting on a round thing, you know, which is spinning wow. yeah. on its axis at 33 kilometers per second. And we have no sense of that motion or movement. And the same spinning rock is revolving around the sun at 1600 kilometers an hour, mm -hmm. supersonic. And we think nothing is happening and we yep, are yep. sitting there yep. looking. So reality wow. has everything to do with understanding. Mm -hmm. Reality has everything to do with paradigms that we have. And let me give you an example. Leaders cannot interpret events in a way that depresses others. Mm. We were not born to depress. We were born to inspire. Just think about it. Wow. You can take all the facts you want and interpret something so despairing and so disparaging and so hopeless mm. that people will just want to commit suicide and say, well, there's no point in living anymore. But when you take the same set of facts and you interpret them in an inspiring manner, that's when leadership comes to the fore. So meaning comes from you and I. It, it is not a meaning that's given to me. It is the meaning yeah. I give to something. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have. So when you put this question, um, are you meaningful or meaningless? everyone responds by saying, I'm meaningful. And the best part is, okay, how do you say that you are meaningful? What is the meaning of your life? By which philosophy do you live? Mm. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah. So again, surface. Yep. So we want to get out of the surface and go into the depths and to realize the power that we are blessed with and to leverage that power for our benefit and the benefit of those around us. So if I am the light, there should be brightness around me. How can it be that I'm the light and everyone is dim? How yep. can that be? Mm -hmm. You know, so meaning is something that I find um, oh. we must not become slaves of, mm -hmm. but we create in a way which is uplifting, inspiring, encouraging, motivating, and compels us to do something and make mm -hmm. a difference. What's the point of living a life a hundred years, right? Yeah. The point. And when you pop, no one remembers. That's a meaningless life. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you lived even 10 years and you did something phenomenal, you'll always be remembered. Look at Arfa Karim. How old was mm -hmm. she when she passed? I mean, she was such a young girl. There's a building named after her. Yeah. Arfa Karim Tower. Her parents are working on the mission that she represented. She lives even after she's gone. Mm -hmm. She may have been young, but she still lives. And there's so many young kids who went early, but 
have left a resounding legacy that keeps on inspiring people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so I find that giving meaning to things is what I would love my audience to, mm -hmm. uh, our audience to, um, to take out from this yeah. conversation. We have the power to give meaning to our lives and the lives of those around us. And it must be exciting, adventurous. Mm -hmm. and the other point, point that you mentioned about yeah. young people and the free thinking. Look, I mean, freedom and discipline go hand in hand. True. So what I find sometimes is that when we talk about youth, um, they're very driven by the sense of freedom. Mm -hmm. And it's great to, to have that. I mean, you know, to step out and discover and do things. Um, and freedom, of course, in its ideal form is what? I do whatever I want, however I want, whenever yep. I want, that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. which is fine. But the point here is that freedom by the dictates of nature is governed by discipline. Mm -hmm. No discipline, there is no freedom. I mean, just look at an aircraft. Did you see Top Gun? No, Maverick. I haven't. Everybody keeps telling me I haven't. <laughs> no. Must uh, watch that or the earlier version. I will. Uh, and 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 look at the aircrafts that fly mm -hmm. in the sky with freedom. Mm -hmm. Yet look at discipline that is supporting that freedom. That discipline of aerodynamics, the mm -hmm. G force, wow. the training. I mean, minus the discipline, that freedom is explosive. It's it's anarchy. And if we exercise our freedoms mm -hmm. in a very disciplined way, now what is discipline? It's not about being in a cage. Discipline yeah. is about being true to your values, your mm -hmm. principles. And if your values and principles are not rooted in your own reflections, and they're just inherited because mama said mm -hmm. so, or daddy said mm -hmm. this is the way things are done. No, 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 no. You have to consciously embed a set of principles that will guide not only you, but your family and your generations, and not through lectures, but through your life. Mm -hmm. I mean, your life is an example for those around you. Thank and you. kids are very impressionable. I was once a kid. You were once a kid. Of course, yeah. Um, we were born, and if you think about it, you, you were born, and someone said azan in your ears. Mm -hmm. Well, was your permission taken? No. no. So we have been programmed from childhood to mm -hmm. be what we are. Unconsciously, we have no idea why we like pink or blue or mm -hmm. white. We have no idea why we behave in a certain way or have preferences for a particular lifestyle. Why do we lean left or right? We have no idea. It yes. is just something that we have imbibed unconsciously. Mm -hmm. now, awareness is about... yeah. Why do I believe what I believe? Mm -hmm. Why is, do I say this is right and that is wrong? And exploring your own identity, your own uh, values, your own priorities, your own uh, principles, asking yourself, why am I doing what I do? Why should I be nice to people? Why should I be fair and just? Is it just because they say so? Mm -hmm. And when you indulge in that kind of inquiry, you'll find that all religions, whether it's Jainism or Christianity yeah. or Judaism, Islam, all religions came to guide us mm -hmm. to a set of and guidelines which will give us uh, a way of living and functioning in a society in a fair and equitable way. And the interpretation of that varies. Right. And I find that, um, you know, if we are devoid of um, principles that are aligned with nature, mm -hmm. then so you know, if you want to be, remain scientific and not religious, the laws of nature are applied to psychology, laws of nature apply to physiology, yep. laws of nature apply to physics, everything around us, physical, the metaphysical. And if we abuse those laws, mm -hmm. and if we discover those laws and leverage them to our advantage, we will rise. And there are examples I can give, um, but after you sure. uh, tease me <laughs> Kamba, one more question from my side of me since we're already on the topic and you talked about social programming right and um, since I've again you've talked to many people youngsters I also have my peers who are sort of going in the same journey you know people graduate and then the social programming tells us to you know find your first job once you find that job you want to somehow climb this invisible ladder that was also a social yeah, programming yeah. 
And that ladder is just full of right. titles, right? I want to be, let's say you go in as a trainee and then you want to be an associate and then you want to be a manager, regardless of knowing how to manage people because you always want to impress who's above you, but not below, right? And I think that right. sort of uh, dynamics that I see as well, you know, around me, I think that's also one reason why there's this lack of leadership in sometimes mm. senior titles as well, you know, those positions that people have. Because there's this constant need of, I want to impress my boss, but then what about those who are, you know, the subordinates, you know? So, yes. and I think I would really want to hear more from more from you about that in terms of, you know, the rat race that we're sort of in. Yes. And in a rat race, whether you win or lose, you remain a rat. So sure. I don't want any of my listeners to remain a rat. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, schools. Now, if you think of education, as one example, mm -hmm. then jobs, factories, mass production, the corporate environment. Yep. You know, there is a thing called contradictions. First, let mm -hmm. me give you that lens before yep. I give some insights. A contradiction is a blessing from God. Mm. Contradictions are found in every phenomena around you. Yep. And it is making sense of those contradictions that is intelligence. So let's first keep that in the back of our mind. Now, I'll give you some examples of contradictions. Mm -hmm. Contradiction is very different from a conflict. In a conflict is when we um, are faced with two choices. Both are very compelling. Mm -hmm. One pointing towards ethics. The other is pointing towards pleasure. And, you know, you're trying to resolve that. Mm -hmm. And you know what is right. You know deep down what is wrong. But you want to give yourself the license. And yet you don't. So that's an inner conflict. Contradiction, on the other hand, is a blessing. Why is it a blessing? Because if you think of it this way, I'll give you a physical science example. Mm -hmm. There was a time, uh, only 200 or less than 200 years ago, when people thought that lighter than air can fly. And as a result, we had the Zeppelin airships uh, the size of a jumbo or bigger mm -hmm. with the cabin underneath and highly, highly dangerous. I mean, unsafe. And the speed of a rickshaw. Mm -hmm. you know, can you imagine... This was the paradigm only 200 years ago about flying. Yep. And at the same time, we have another saying which says, heavier than air can fly. So mm -hmm. now these two, lighter than air can fly, heavier than air can fly, sit side by side. Yep. Both are true in themselves, yet they negate each other. Mm -hmm. And that is the contradiction. And that is the brilliance. And the Wright brothers when they discovered that if lighter than air can fly, then definitely the heavier than air can fly too. And that's where resistance came. And that's where Allama yep. Iqbal came. That mm -hmm. se na Ki to chalti hai tujhe uncha urane ke liye. Yeah. You know, so that kind of stuff is something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. Likewise, in the psychological world, the laws of nature and contradictions within that um, you know, there's a verse which I'd like to share. Mita de apni hasti ko. Negate yourself if you want a station in life. Mita de apni hasti ko. Agar koi maktaba chahe, dana khak me milke gule gulzar hota hai. Think of this. Now, how do you negate yourself on this planet? How do you say, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing? No, 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 no. And it, it goes against the very notion of confidence and self-esteem yep. and self-respect. So humility is the word. Mm -hmm. Humility is the word that is least understood and the most required. Seriously. Yeah. Yep. And what is humility? Um, humility is looking at yourself with grace and dignity and respect. And whomsoever you come across, whomsoever, whether it's I mean, and they're, you know, they have low income backgrounds and high mm -hmm. income backgrounds. Uh, there, there are people who are better looking than you. There are people who are more intelligent than you or less intelligent than you. Humility is simply treating everyone with respect for what, and not looking down at anyone. Mm -hmm. Not Very considering true. anyone less as a result of their caste or their creed or their... Uh, intelligence, low IQ, high IQ, none of that. Mm -hmm. Respectful uh, and not to consider them less than who, who you are. They're different, yes, but they are worthy of as much respect and love Very as true. you are worthy of respect yep. and love. 
that is negating yourself and not becoming self-indulgent and narcissistic mm -hmm. um, and I am and everyone else is a mm -hmm. bit, you know I'm not there they can do nothing that's arrogance yeah that is absolute arrogance so humility is now the operationalizing of negating yourself which is mm -hmm. you are and yet others also are yep so wow. giving people the same regard that you give mm -hmm. to yourself regardless of their color their background whatever so that. once you're imbued with that you mm -hmm. connect and you engage with others and i find that if after meeting with you people feel good about themselves mm -hmm. then you are humble mm -hmm. that's an indicator they should not feel good about how oh wow i met so and so he's amazing mm -hmm. no 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 they should come away feeling good about themselves and if that is happening then you are imbued with this mita de apni hasti ko agar chahe and we notice in life i mean uh, respect comes from him uh, him i mean god yep and disgrace also comes from him life and death comes from him and so does what you earn and um, he provides for you not only in form of family relationships but means of living so these three streams life and death you know risk uh, which is uh, means mm -hmm. of livelihood and respect these three things are assured by the creator he's the one who brought you to this planet he's the one who's going to invite you back yeah very true Yes, yeah, so as we were discussing, you know, life in its biggest or broadest sense, three things that at least as Muslims we realize, and I'm sure that other faiths would also, also have similar concepts, you know, respect, disgrace, life, death, uh, livelihood, mm. all of these things are provided for. And the irony is that in a rat race, we get caught up in all of these. We fear dying, we uh, want respect, and we try to buy respect, and we um, think that position and status will give us that. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we get into the rat race um, in order to have fame and popularity. These are not things that will ever give us that peace of mind and the sense of fulfillment and the meaning that we are looking for. These are things that will take us away from ourselves because our focus is so external. It's unbelievable. And we'll always be uh, suffering from this deficit mindset or scarcity mindset. Mm -hmm. Oh God, I don't have this, I don't have that. And then when we get into comparisons that it gets even worse and more toxic, mm -hmm. it's unbelievable. And when you are freed from all of this, then the real life begins. Mm -hmm. And you know, and if you are not worried about life and death, yes, you have to be careful. You want to protect yourself. You don't want to be reckless. And at the same time, you want to know that, you know, by being respectful to others, you'll be uh, earning respect anyway. And self-respect is respecting not only yourself, but other people and the environment, climate change. Mm -hmm. And the crisis that we are experiencing yeah. is as a lack of respect for the environment in which we live. If you just look at the soil we walk on, mm -hmm. there's, there is so much life in that. We don't even know. I was seeing a BBC documentary just yeah. now. And in a fistful of soil, there are microbes and the life forms in there. And we stomp on them. Can mm -hmm. you believe? Humility is being gentle even on the soil you walk on and not stomp on it. When you stomp on it, it you're stomping on the life-giving force. What are you saying? And look at the, the amount of pollution that we have created, the carbon mm -hmm. emissions we cause. We are mindless of the damage we are causing the environment and our relationships and to ourselves in the process. These are outcomes of a rat race. Mm -hmm. So when you realize that, hey, I'm a program preconditioned individual who's getting into a pattern which is destructive for me, my family, and everything else, then I recondition myself. You know, so the interesting thing is that, well, fine, we are conditioned, but how do we get out of this conditioning? Mm -hmm. Recondition. Wow. But recondition ourselves more consciously, mm -hmm. deliberately, by making choices, by exploring, by learning from different sources and arriving at, a, you know, the search for truth will be forever. Very true. Very, very true. It's always a work in progress. 
It's a work in progress. Yep. No one has any monopoly on that. Mm -hmm. But the search for it is the most beautiful thing ever. The search for perfection is the most beautiful thing ever. The pursuit of excellence is the most beautiful thing ever. There is no room for mediocrity. We were not, we did not come to this planet to just feed ourselves and live in a yeah. box. We came on this planet to make a difference in our lives and in the lives of those so that we can all celebrate this beautiful thing we call life as opposed to see the anguish mm -hmm. that people are seeing all over the world. Thank and you. if we don't feel their pain, we are not human. And it, it is truly something that gives you purpose, meaning, because, you know, they say that if you can't change the world, at least change the world of a person. Mm -hmm. You know, at least do that. And what joy it brings to that other soul and to you. Happiness comes from uh, not only being grateful for what you have, but also seeing a smile on the face of another. And that's wow. it. How do you do that? I mean, what does it take to do that? It just takes time, attention, mm -hmm. caring, empathy, respect, compassion. These are the qualities that give richness to life. And you can only do that when you are not living in a scarcity mindset. Yep. You can do that when you're living in an abundant mindset. Wow. Now, what is abundant mindset? Yeah. You just start out of the rat yeah. by embracing abundance. Mm -hmm. Now, abundance is when I step out. I, I live in a village in Banigala. And uh, when I step out at night, there's no light pollution. So I'm able to see the clear sky, which wow. is clear, mm -hmm. and the stars, right? And yeah. I once asked a chokidar to come and stand with me uh, in the courtyard. And I said, look up. And he did. I said, what do you see? So he said, I see stars. I said, yes. Now, that is what you see. A cat will see. A horse will see. Now, as um, that scene that you have ahead of you, above you, what does it mean? Now, this is where the meaning comes in, right? So, is manzar ka matlab kya hai? So, now this is the first time that I'm getting him to actually exercise this. What is between our ears and behind our eyes, you know? Wow. Kete sa, bhoot khubsurat hai. Mene ka haan. Or batao, is ka kya matlab hai? Is manzar ka kya matlab hai? And then he says that uh, Allah ki shaan hai. So, I said, haan, very good. और क्या मतलब है तुम्हारी जात से इसका क्या ताल्लुक है यार अच्छा तो रिपीट आफ्टर मी ये हसीन मंजर जो मैं देख रहा हूं मुझे आज एहसास हुआ है कि ये सारा निजाम तूने मेरे लिए बनाया तो मेरी क्या वैल्यू होगी अभी सूरह रहमान फॉर एग्जांपल इज किन किन नेमतों को तुम झुटलाओगे आई मीन लुक एट द ब्लेसिंग्स सराउंडिंग यू and who is it for? It is for you. If you have Bill Gates and the Elon Musks and the Jeff Bezos on this planet, and if you have those who are suffering in Calcutta or mm -hmm. Pakistan or anywhere, yeah. God has populated this world with contrasts, with variety, with mysteries, and all for you. And you say that I'm nothing, I'm meaningless. How can that be? So the moment you realize that everything that you experience, everything that is around you, the fact that you're alive is a trillion, trillion, trillion. You can't even monetize it. Mm -hmm. Life cannot be monetized. True. Life is its own value depending on the meaning that you give it. Those suffering from despair and depression are hopeless. And they're hopeless because they are not aware. And it is your responsibility, my responsibility to at least make an effort mm -hmm. to make them realize that there, there are other ways of looking at life rather than the one where no one cares for you. I mean, I remember Michael Jackson's song in Brazil, uh, they don't really care about us. Yeah. Why should they? Why should they? Mm -hmm. If you don't care for yourself. Oh my God. And I'm getting goosebumps right now. I'm not even joking. Wow. Wow. Yeah. wow. Hey, why should anyone care for you when you don't care for yourself? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why should anyone respect you if you don't have any regard for yourself? Why should it? You know, people see you as you see yourself. 
Now, if you fall in your own eyes, you'll fall in the eyes of those around you. Mm -hmm. It's only those who are humble who will realize that you have fallen and it is their job to bring you back up. Wow. That's it. And then you step out of a rat race. Mm -hmm. and get into something much more joyous. And it's not driven by comparison or social standing, the rich, the poor, the class, high class, low class. I mean, I've been in some uh, functions where mm -hmm. yeah, low society hai unke saath. we can't be seen with them. Mm -hmm. God, that is a rat race. True, right true. You can't be seen with God's best creation. Mm -hmm. How can you say that? Just because they come from a different socioeconomic background, they become low society. What is this nonsense? Mm -hmm. And this is why we need to understand diversity yep. and inclusion. And uh, the favorite line that I have, and because we are talking of leadership in the broadest sense, yes. Yes. whatever we do in life, we must not leave others behind. Mm -hmm. like, we should take them along with us somehow yep. or make them feel part of uh, something huge that you're thinking or doing. And just that sense of being part of something, you know, it's a small part maybe, mm -hmm. but that small part is also very significant. Yep. And if people only realize their significance, because ultimately what do we need? A roof over our heads, a, meal, mm -hmm. a couple of square meals a day and a respectful environment. I mean, you're rich as as you can be. I mean, what is wealth? A bank statement yep. shows you have a million dollars. Mm -hmm. What do I do with that? I can't even wipe my nose with that damn thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I know that there is wealth out there, I and mean, I can always access it whenever I require. Mm -hmm. And I don't want so much that it burdens me and takes me away from what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. So you know, to to be um, functional, responsible. And not getting into this comparison or hierarchical kind of race, but into what um, impact am I creating through my presence? And it's not about numbers. It's more about the qualitative shifts that are happening around you. So frankly, whether a million people are impacted or 10 million people, it's not about that. Mm -hmm. It's about having impacted yourself and wow. those around you to start with, to start with. And YLC is just one simple example of a Thank blessing. You. Yes. You know, and then there are so many other entities doing such mm -hmm. good work out there on this planet. And it is my dream that all the good that is happening on the, in this world is put together somehow. Yeah. Yeah. There's a kaleidoscope of um, initiatives and drives that people are doing all over the world. I'm sure in Finland, there must be mm -hmm. a lot of who not only donate but in yep. fact contribute to mm -hmm. their society and keep it going. I mean, I the too. education system is so brilliant mm -hmm. um, in Finland, and I hope we can learn from that and yep. turn our educational um, system away from the factory for mm -hmm. floor production, mm -hmm. you know, great culture to mm -hmm. uh, something which is more reflective and learning, and kids come out with a sense of well-being yes. and the contributing members of society wow. can read and write of course and language is so important I mean, hidayat bhi to, mm -hmm. um, aiti, na? even prophet muhammad sallallahu when he was in the cave and this uh, wahi was mm -hmm. oh, ikra read so he's replied i cannot read and then allah enabled him to mm -hmm. and uh, so the point is that you know language is the medium through which we are guided and it is language which is which adorns us which you know some people often think of jewelry as adornment right mm -hmm. our vocabulary is adornment what words do we use what meanings do we assign to those words how do we live those words in our lives and the more beautiful words you surround yourself with and express them the more beautiful you become wow. and some words are very smelly and mm -hmm. others are very fragrant. Some words are beautiful to listen to, very soothing, and others are very jarring. So what words, I mean, you, you are judged by the company you keep, company of the words you keep, right. company of books you read, mm -hmm. and the company of the people you meet right. on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. You know, that's an interesting phenomenon. It really is. Yeah.
Oh my God. Wow. Come back, I can say one thing. I honestly had a little bit of a rough weekend, but you just made it, honestly. And I personally will be going back to this interview as many times as I need to in my life personally, wherever I am, whatever I do, because there's just so much mashla mashla that I'm just gathering and processing. It's, I mean, I can't even. I think it's a lot of fun to talk about you. And I would simply say one thing as a concluding remark. Yeah. That don't count days in your life. Don't stop mm-hmm. counting days in your life. Um, count the life in the day that you are living right now mm-hmm. because we don't know uh, if tomorrow comes sure. but live now as though this is it and then when you go to sleep sleep you know in a chill manner when mm-hmm. you wake up ask yourself god what do you want from me today you know yeah oh, okay because i'm up so you, there must be something what meaning do i give to this day mm. and live each day to its full yeah So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this, and many other sages have said this subsequently, that um, when you plan, plan as though you will never die. When you plan, plan mm-hmm. as though you will never die. That's why SOL has a four hundred year vision, yep. of which we now have another three hundred and seventy five years to go, <laughs> and even that is a numerical, mm-hmm. which is so. And puny. Although some people say three hundred and seventy-five, what are you talking about? So when you plan, plan as though you'll never die, and when you act, act as though you will not get a second chance. When it comes to doing, do it. Mm-hmm. Don't think that you have oh, kal. You know, procrastination yeah. stems from ho jayega, kar lenge, kya hai, dar to hai na, aaj nahi to kal ho jayega. No, and that is how you find deeper meaning. And twenty-four hours become a life. And I'd like to share with you this poem from William Blake. I think it's uh, it's very oh. relevant to be discussed mm-hmm. because the meaning of life is this: that you and I are eternal beings. We are not finite beings who were born and will die. No, we are eternal beings. We came from somewhere. We are here, and then we'll go back. This is the ultimate virtual reality. Mm. It is interactive. Look, we are talking, and when okay. I say something, you respond. You ask a question, I say something. I, you know, so we are living the yeah. ultimate virtual reality. And human beings are crazy. They are trying to replicate humans. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. come on. artificial general intelligence (AGI). Now it's not AI anymore. The pursuit mm-hmm. is AGI. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We create a superhuman. Why don't you become one? Wow! Why? Why not become mm-hmm. one? Uh, but there you go. I mean, natural intelligence and artificial general intelligence. I mean, it's it's interesting. I mean, in really is. To, yeah. Like the, the poem that I'd like to sure. close with is this from William Blake, and he says, and I want this to be on my gravestone when I pop, whenever, um, to see the world in a grain of sand. to see the world in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower to hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour so we've almost experienced eternity wow haven't we yeah yep. so wonderful thank you thank you so much kamba this honestly has been I don't even. I don't have words. I really don't. I really don't. So I don't want to. Good you don't. Good <laughs> yeah. you don't. Good you don't. Thank and you. I, so neither much. do I. But inshallah, we'll be uh, connecting again whenever. Sure. And if you come to Islamabad, it'll be yes. a pleasure to host you. Look after yourself. God bless you. Thank you, you so much. Allah. Thank you. Tafis. Tafis.